I'm here with my November, it's not November yet, coffee? Thanks, say it. I love you. And? Thank you. I'm a... Oh, best. It was like a gift baby. Best mom you've ever had. your girl Jay and today I'm here with my October wrap-up for 2019. I read a total of 12 books so I will be splitting this up into two parts. This is part one where I will talk about the first six books that I read this month and part two will be the last six books that I read this month. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read was a graphic novel. It was called At the End of Your Tether by Adam Smith and I give this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This graphic novel follows Ludo who was 15 when he met his ex-girlfriend Arlo. Years after his army mother moved bases, he is hoping to reunite with Arlo and so he gives her a call and they agree to meet the following day. When Ludo arrives on her doorstep the next day, he discovers that she has been missing for the past week. He believes that the local police are doing nothing to find her so he decides to take matters into his own hands. I was initially drawn to this graphic novel because I thought the cover was just absolutely gorgeous. Unfortunately, I was not the biggest fan of this. It felt like you were almost dropped into the middle of a series rather than a standalone story. It just wasn't very clear and for the most part I was very confused what was going on. By the end of the story it did become a little more clear but I was still a bit confused how everything tied together. Overall I think that it was an interesting concept but it could definitely have been executed differently or better in my opinion so 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is probably one of my favorite of the year. It's Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahern. I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. I will have a full review up of it. I already filmed it, just have to edit it, just don't know when that's going to happen. But this book follows Lou, who has run away from her witch coven and is hiding out in a town where magic is forbidden. The church protects this town through witch hunters called Chasseurs. After a stunt gone wrong, Reed Diggory, who is the captain of the Chasseurs, finds himself married to Lou and he needs to decide whether or not to protect her from her dark history or let her burn. And it's like the story of that. But like I said, I have a review coming soon about it so I'm not going to talk too much about it but I absolutely loved this book. I thought it was just super enthralling, super atmospheric. I loved Lou as a main character. She's probably one of my favorite characters now and I'm just super here for this book. I know some people have problems with it which are all valid but personally I really liked it so stay tuned for my review coming eventually. The next book that I read is called Eight Will Fall. This is by Sarah Heron and I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. I will have a review of this up on November 25th so check that out for my full thoughts. This takes place in a land where magic is outlawed and empaths are forced to mine a mineral called luminite. One guide and seven criminal empaths led by 17 year old Larkin are sent down to the reach by the queen in order to kill a great evil that is threatening her kingdom. The deeper they go the more dangerous it gets. The mission seems like a death sentence. As they continue on their journey they discover a dark secret about their past that make them realize that they may have been chosen for a reason. Like I said this is another one that I'm going to have a review of so I'm not going to go into great detail. It did start off a bit slow because the author had to lay down the backstory of the Reach and what empaths were and all that jazz so that took a bit to get into but once they actually got into the Reach it was very interesting. The creatures that they end up coming into contact with in the Reach were really cool. They were probably my favorite part of the book. The biggest downfall I think were the characters. There are eight main characters so it is very hard to get to know any of them if that makes sense. Like you get glimpses of everybody but you don't really get to know anybody very well. Like I said I'll go into more detail in my review so check that out on November 25th. The next one that I read was another graphic novel. It was The Street Angels by Jim Rugg and this <laughs> is actually the fifth book in a series. I did not realize that when I picked it up. I just thought the cover was cool. This follows Jessie who is the deadliest girl alive and she shows up at the Bleeders gang tryouts because she heard that she could get free food and it's like the story of that. So like I said it's the fifth in a series so you obviously need background knowledge on this character and her story and how she relates to the bleeders 
because I was very confused. But I will say that the panels are super duper colorful. I was super into it just because I thought the panels were really cool. And I actually really thought it was cool because like every time a new character is introduced, you get these like player cards, which like give you their stats almost and like their likes and interests, things like that, which I thought was a kind of cool concept. But, like, look, there's a Tiger's playing card. Like, I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars only because, like, I had no idea what was going on because I'm a dum-dum and picked up the fifth book in a series. So that's on me, but it was still fun for what it was. The next book that I have, um, I really did not like. It's Going Bovine by Libba Bray, which I'm really disappointed about because Libba Bray wrote the Diviner series, which is one of my favorite series. So I was like, yes, another Libba Bray book. No, not even close to anything like the diviners obviously but i thought that it would be like the same writing style no it was like teenage boy humor which i personally am not a huge fan of so i didn't like it but if you are not aware this book follows 16 year old cameron who gets a very scary diagnosis once he gets this diagnosis he sets off on a road trip to try to find a cure for his disease and he has the help of an angel named dulcie a dwarf named Gonzo, and a talking garden gnome that may be a viking warrior. But yeah, like I said, one out of five stars. It just wasn't my cup of tea, so I know that a lot of people really do like this book. It just was not for me. And then the final book that I have is called The Very, Very Far North, and this is by Dan Barrell, and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. It follows a polar bear named Dwayne who has many friends in the Arctic and these are his stories and adventures with them. This was a super super cute middle grade book. I didn't really have the highest hopes for it going in but I was very surprised when I did read it. It's basically Winnie the Pooh but in the Arctic. It also has some illustrations in it, which I thought were super cute. Like, they're just a fun addition to the story. I'll try to find you another one real quick. Maybe, if we can find one. Like, they're just super cute, fun additions to the story. But I think that this is a great book to read aloud to, like, your kids or your cousins if they're really little, because there were a lot of really good lessons in the book that are told in a super cute fun way. I also like the cover because it's like purple and pink ombre and I just think it's really pretty. So huge fan of this one, Winnie the Pooh in the Arctic. Alright everybody, so those were the first six books that I read this month. Obviously not a very good star rating month for me. I had one five star, one four star, and then two in one stars and one three star. So the second half of the month wasn't much better, but stay tuned for part two coming to you sometime soon. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye!